couple years ago, we did a community project called Lydia Fair, which had a theme that was connected to home, in particular home tonight, like wherever you find yourself today, that's where you're home. I wanted to write a theater piece that was on that theme of home. And a friend of mine had been displaced because the, the detail that's in the movie about the condo being under underwater, that's actually, I, kn I know a couple that that was the case and they were displaced for a period of time. They had to stay with friends. I want to play with a comedic, comedic form, short, and then this idea of home. What I ended up drawing from is my experiences of living in the city. We lived in Jamaica Plain for many years and um, I called 911 many times. <laughs> I had pictured it in the foyer. We had a two-family house and the foyer was about three and a half feet by three and a half feet. And it had the two doors from the apartments and then the front door of the house in that little confined space. And so I just thought, what would it be like to have a door slamming farce in a four by four square? Because of the design of the Lydia Fair, I knew that to perform that play on the stage that we had and the setting that we had wasn't, wasn't really gonna work. So I thought, well, we'll just do a reading. And um, at the moment, that was all I was seeking to do with it. Stories by River has been producing a few films over the past year. We've done Silent Universe, we've done Melt, they picked up Evaluating Kately, and then this is the fourth film that they've really taken on, which is Slippery Slope. And in the past two films, Silent Universe and Melt, I was the editor, and I also worked on set helping out in whatever um, avenue I could. Being a lover of film and wanting to produce and direct and as an editor, you know, always constantly thinking about story, I want to eventually help and direct. Action! Christina had mentioned to me about, do you have anything? You know, we're making films, do you have anything? And I thought, well, yeah, I do have something and it's short, it's easily producible, which I've, I think of that now when I write. It's not just about the story that you want to tell, it's about will it be in a form that it's each easy to produce so that you might actually get it to more people. And that kind of hit the specs of the next film as it, it was a comedy. I was completely, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In other words, I didn't believe for a minute that it would get made. I just thought, this is a great idea and it's sincere and you know, you're earnest but it's not really gonna happen because I had just spent 10 years on a musical project which was supposedly going to get made into a film. That's why we didn't produce it for the theater because we were gonna make it for film and, and uh, the executive team lost its will to do the project. So then I thought, okay, when people say they're gonna make a film based on something that you write, don't believe them. <laughs> so. But there was no harm in it for me because the play existed and I knew that it wasn't gonna be hard to adapt. It wasn't gonna take a lot of time if it really came to that. So then when Christina got back to me and said, we're ready to have auditions, I was like, really? And then, you know, the dates were set and knowing Christina, I'm not surprised that when she said she was gonna do it, she was gonna do it, but I was still pelly surprised when it happened. So one Delta, take one Mark. So she got the script from him. She talked to me, and as well as Michael, and said, hey, would you want to direct this? I said, yes, I'd love to direct this. This is a great opportunity. And we took it and we said, how can we make it into a film? And you know that in itself brought a lot of um, creative and fun challenges. And to be a part of that was incredible. I'm glad that it gets laughs. Because there's a, there's a humanity to the story, so even though there's some somewhat of laughter at the expense of characters, I think that you probably come away with some sense of liking all three of the characters, or, or kind of pulling for all three of the characters. I, you know, like one of the nice like silver linings in the story is, you know, past people's quirky personalities. You know, there's this level that we're all human. You know, we all have our flaws, but we all 
have our desires too and kind of like working that out you know and it's definitely a film about conflict management but I think it's also a film about uh, family and family going beyond blood. I think the notion of this character Kate who opens her door and doesn't know what she'll find and does so and then ends up intimately connected to these people whom she will likely not see again or maybe she'll see him again when he gets back from the airport. There's something about that coming out of your place, getting, getting past the threshold of your door, there's an obstacle there and, and there being a risk in that and so for her it's a it's both a comic risk and it's a risk that has some pathos for her because she has genuine fears related to people, but it's clear that she loves people, she's like into people, she's very observant. And so here, the notion that there's something blocking her from being able to be herself, and then she pushes through that, I think that's what we're laughing at. Is there something delightful about you know, pushing past fears and, and connecting with other people. And they're, they're all, there's some level of absurdity to all three of the characters in some way. And so none of the characters are necessarily who you personally would want to be. <laughs> uh, so Kate, yeah, she's crazy, but I mean, really good heart and I think I think part of, honestly, I think part of the reason why she takes this step is, you know, in some ways she's um, using their conflict as an external source to resolve her own conflict. And we, we are all in, in conflict and we, we do it as well as we do. And so the notion of being able to look at that and know you're looking at, this is a conflict resolution model you're being presented with. And it came from a church. She went to a workshop at her church. It feels to me that there's some way in which we might frown on that insertion of church into real life or the insertion of good psychological principles into real life that, that's like, no, you know, if I want that, I'll go to therapy. I don't go to movies to be taught something about how to be a good person. I think that's true. I think, you know, with the reason why we see a story is to be entertained and maybe to learn something about ourselves or about other people that we don't know. It's like it's a way of getting into relationship with people that we might not ever get into relationship with. So it's a, it's a way of exploring life vicariously because I think about those things, but hopefully, you know, it functions as a story in its own right. So it's not, its primary goal isn't to teach. That's kind of an, you know, a secondary thing. Like I didn't write the film as a teaching tool, but if the film comes off as a teaching tool, it's probably because I'm a teacher and I, you know, I'm, I think about those things and I think about how people relate. So of course I'm, I'm interested in that. I'm interested in interactions. I'm interested in resistance. The resistance you get when somebody is trying to tell you something and you can't hear it. Like that's interesting to me. And it's interesting to me how we navigate around resistance. And, and I think it's inherently funny. It's the, all the little dodges that we make and the, 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 the fictions we create about ourselves or about our lives. If somebody was watching it when it was happening and saw how dodgy we are and how indirect we are and how utterly fearful we are when we're in front of other people, even when we're coming off as being very put together like Jill is very put together, but just like how terrified she is that somebody is coming, inter interrupting her world and her moment. In some ways, the whole premise of the of the story is that Kate's interjections are ultimately, though, though they're intrusive and they're unwelcome, they're ultimately beneficial. Um, but you wouldn't want to live with her. <laughs> I'm over the map! 
I think it's true that it might be fun to watch a film about Kate and it might even be okay to let Kate kind of tell you what she thinks about your relationships so long as it's only 10 minutes. When, when people watch this, you know, like what would be kind of cool to see is people watching it and identifying with a character. Maybe they see themselves as one of the characters. Maybe they see themselves as Kate, you know, or even Jill. Or maybe they see somebody else as one of the characters. And if you see somebody else as one of the characters, like, why do you, ask yourself, why, why do you see that in them? Like, really, really look into it. Um, I think it, it's, it's kind of cool. I, I, that's what makes film so great, so it's aha moments where the, and when you can really have this empathy with a character, more than just sympathy, like an empathy, like you, you find that bond. And uh, maybe that can like arouse some thoughts, you know, some questions. So it'd be kind of cool to see that. You treat her right. <laughs>